Um, right now, we're going to have what Godzilla came to see, the Cantabrian debate. We've already seen John Knight. He's warmed up. I, I see that John Nelson is rested and ready. And he's already got here. John Nelson has his trainer, Scott Elric, with him. So um, without further ado, um, what we're going to do is John Nelson will talk contra against the Cantabrian. John Knight will talk for it. Then we'll allow both of them to rebut each other. And then after that, we'll have further discussion. So John Nelson, it's your stage, please. Thank you, Spencer. Uh, what I'm going to speak about today is, is largely from the paper that I did with Spencer earlier this year in the New Mexico Museum of Natural History and Science Bulletin number 82. But there have been a couple of significant new publications that came out since that one went to press and, and new insights, including uh, uh, some important ones received during this workshop. I'm focusing on the Cantabrian, and I won't have too much to say about the Bayou Alien. Uh, and I'm speaking uh, chiefly from the American perspective, uh, as I've lived in the United States all my life. I pre present thanks to uh, Bill DeMichael for enlightening conversations and to Scott Elric for the same and for uh, setting up my, my PowerPoint point slides. As, as we've heard, the original rationale for the Cantabrian stage or substage, as it's now known, was to fill a perceived gap between the type Westphalian and Stephanian uh, stages in Western Europe. And the Cantabrian, as we know it, is the product of more than half a century of intensive research by the paleobotanist Robert Wagner, 1927 to 2018, and many of his colleagues. Uh, they worked exclusively or almost exclusively on the megaflorus. Uh, the Cantabrian concept first appeared in 1964 and it was formalized in 1969. Uh, uh, may, may we have the next slide, please? Uh, thank you. Uh, just a simple map of Western Europe showing the Westphalian type area in Western Germany, uh, the city of Saint Etienne in, in Southern France, uh, type area for the Stephanian, uh, roughly 700 kilometers apart. And in Northern Spain, the Cantabrian mountains where all of this work was carried out. Uh, the next slide, please. Uh, uh, that shows uh, a map of northern Spain, including uh, localities that were important in, in Wagner's studies there in, in solid uh, black dots and cities and open circles. Uh, we are presenting a number of charges against the, the Cantabrian in that it, it violates, uh, in many aspects, stratigraphic codes and sound stratigraphic practice. First, uh, the Cantabrian was prematurely formalized. Uh, Wagner and his colleagues really should have done much more research before proposing this as a formal unit. But they brought it out in, in 1969 when the stratotypes had not yet been selected. Uh, key areas had only been mapped in a cursory fashion, and even the boundaries weren't uh, clearly designated. Wagner wasn't even uh, positive whether the new unit should be assigned to the Stephanian as opposed to the Westphalian or a unit unto itself. And only two years later, by a vote of the IUGS, the Cantabrian was officially established as a formal unit. Uh, the, the two leading advocates, Wagner was secretary of the IUGS and, and T.N. George was the president. So obviously they had uh, great influence in getting that proposal through. A second uh, serious problem with the, the Cantabrian, may we have the next slide please? Uh, is that its stratotypes were changed twice. And this uh, contravenes stratigraphic codes which stipulate that once a stratotype or type section is established, it is never changed. 
even if the type section is destroyed as by highway construction, uh, certainly new sections, reference sections may be introduced and described to further elucidate the characteristics of the unit. The first uh, stratotype was in the Tay Arena syncline marked with the big red one at upper left. Uh, that was 1969 and in 77, a new stratotype was chosen at La Pernia, number two, and then in 1985, it was moved again to uh, Terralante where it remains today. Uh, a third problem with the Cantabrian is that its lower boundary was inappropriately defined and has been changed repeatedly. Initially at Te Arena, uh, the lower boundary was placed at the base of a conglomerate, which is an unconformity. Wasn't the whole rationale of the Cantabrian to describe a section that lacked unconformities. This was uh, uh, said to be a, 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 a one of the few regions in the world having continuous sedimentation across the Westphalian Stefanian boundary. In 1977, the lower contact was redefined to the base of the Lorez limestone at La Pernia. Uh, this uh, is a marine unit, the Lorez limestone, although there was uh, very little said about its fossils and which key fossils were used in the definition. But why is a lithologic boundary used as the uh, boundary of a time unit? And why, why did uh, Wagner and his fellow authors choose a marine unit when they're basing their concept of the Cantabrian almost exclusively on fossil plants? Well, six years later in 1983, Wagner admitted that the Lorez limestone had been miscorrelated uh, within its uh, within the Eastern Cantabrian mountains and they moved the, uh, the base of the Cantabrian up to the Via Nueva limestone shown in blue around the middle of that illustration. Uh, this raised the, the boundary by close to a thousand meters. And we're still at a, a lithologic contact rather than a, a time-based or, or bio-based contact. And it's still in a marine unit rather than than being based on the, on the fossil plants. A fourth charge, uh, uh, codes uh, explicitly say that uh, uh, type areas sh should not, uh, you should try to avoid establishing type areas in regions of intense tectonic deformation, especially when much of that deformation was going on during deposition of the units. And the Cantabrian mountains underwent intense tectonic activity throughout Carboniferous time and specifically during Cantabrian time. It's part of a full thrust belt. There are major strike slip faults and, and probable pull apart basins. If you look closely at that illustration, you'll see there's a different suite of formations in each of those sub basins, which are located each only a few tens of kilometers apart. Uh, let's look at the next slide. Uh, this is uh, a photograph of the Cantabrian lower boundary uh, stratotype, which is about knee high to the man. Uh, the bedding in that section is overturned and there is a major fault at the right uh, Cantabrian in contact with, with the Cretaceous. The next slide, the next slide is the uh, Baruelian uh, lower boundary or top of Cantabrian and these beds also were overturned and the quality of exposure may be a little better but the people in the background are close to the designated boundary. Uh, there are uh, extensive uh, marine rocks in the Cantabrian mountains uh, close by with the rocks that contain uh, uh, plant fossils uh, Wagner and his, his colleagues uh, mentioned them many times, but uh, intensive studies have been done fairly recently. Uh, there's an area called Los Yesarius, which contains, quote, exceptionally complete sequence uh, rich in fusilinids. 
Via et al. 97 and Via and Van Ginkel 2000 reported on the fusilinids. Mendez reported on extensive conodont faunas from that area. And uh, several volcanic ash beds have been radiometrically dated. Uh, certainly, there are great opportunities to integrate that with the megafloral record. Uh, palynology. Uh, has been little used. Uh, uh, Peppers, 96, USGS memoir, 188, uh, charted the Cantabrian with dashed lines and question marks uh, in his uh, comprehensive correlation between North America and Western Europe. A sixth problem is, uh, is problems of the megaflora that have been used, especially Odontopterus cantabrica and the other members of its zone, uh, leading paleobotanists uh, tell us this is, this is not at all a common fossil. Uh, it is certainly rare in North America. It was based on incomplete specimens. Hans Kerp wrote to us earlier this year, I would never describe a new species based on such fragmentary material, particularly not when resemblances with existing taxa are, are so obvious. O. Cantabrica closely resembles a couple of other uh, species. Uh, Christopher Cleal, a leading uh, advocate of the Cantabrian himself, uh, uh, admitted this and Erwin Zodro uh, wrote to us earlier this year, the Cantabrian substage is not securely established. And secondly, O. Cantabrica can no longer be regarded as a guide fossil. Other authors that uh, criticized this were M.P. Donovan and others last year. Uh, in fact, they used the notation O. Cantabrica slash Sclothemi, indicating that those two species are very, very closely similar in appearance. The range of O. Cantabrica is not the same as the limits of the Cantabrian substage. Uh, the zone is a, uh, uh, an assemblage zone rather than uh, determined by first and last occurrences. Uh, as Herman Pfefferkorn related uh, half an hour ago, uh, plants are highly facies dependent, soil, rainfall, drainage, climate, and uh, can be inappropriate for correlation across climate zones. And you can see major problems in correlations in adjacent areas. Uh, may we have uh, the next slide, please, and then skip ahead one. Thank you. Uh, this chart compares uh, correlations between the Northern Appalachian and Illinois basins uh, based on publications by Cleo and the horizontal lines are correlations that have been established for decades using uh, uh, marine fossils and, and the palynology of uh, 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 Russell Peppers, whereas the diagonal line indicates where the base of the Cantabrian was placed in the two basins. It's, it's a major correlation bust. And that leads us to the final charge uh, related to the uh, so-called uh, gap. Uh, would you back up one slide, please? Uh, yes. Uh, the gray areas represent uh, real or, or purported uh, hiatuses in the section. The mid Carboniferous one below is uh, solidly established, but uh, Wagner and Lyons 93 postulated a, a major gap in the Northern Appalachians. Uh, it's uh, Amazing such a gap, if it existed, was, was never brought to light during 150 years of intensive geologic study, mineral exploration, coal test boring, and so on. Uh, although there has been modest uh, tectonic activity in the Illinois and mid-continent basins, there are no unconformities corresponding with this uh, Cantabrian gap. And as we heard yesterday from Phil Heckel, all of the uh, major cyclothems are represented in the mid-continent Illinois and Appalachian basins. And I won't dwell too long on Besley and Cleo. We heard about uh, earlier uh, uh, their very recent study, which also uses long continuous cores uh, 
uh, found no uh, major hiatus between Westphalian and, and Stephanian and a large area, including English Midlands, Ireland, North Sea, Germany, Netherlands, and Maritime Canada, partly undermining the original rationale for the Cantabrian. In closing, uh, we, we fully acknowledge that research in the Cantabrian mountains is valuable. It's a, an intricate and highly uh, detailed uh, series of studies. And after 50 years, uh, 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 certainly some, some big progress is being made. We have uh, radiometric dates and the marine record is being uh, brought to the fore much more. Uh, certainly a, a unit or section or series of sections to knit the type Westphalian and Stephanian are desirable. Uh, it would be extremely valuable to have more reference sections in slightly deformed areas, perhaps uh, some of those long cores from, uh, from Northern England, uh, tighten up the boundaries and zonation and uh, uh, get things nailed down a little better. So uh, perhaps the, uh, the Cantabrian uh, uh, can be salvaged, but it, I, I think there's still quite a bit of work and questions to be answered. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, John. And we'll just go right into the other John. John Knight, it's your turn, please. Okay, uh, right. Well, I'm rather surprised to be going back to topics we uh, discussed 50 years ago and resolved over 30 years ago. Uh, I lost you. Yeah, there we go. Uh, uh, the flaws that, the, first of all, the Cantabrian and Barwellian substages are integral parts of the West European framework. The flaws that may be attributed to these substages will be applicable to all the other chronostratigraphic units of the West European system. And uh, we should remember there's a history to these and all these units have been established without formal reference to any specific biostratigraphic zonal system. Now this is a reflection of the fossil flora and fauna available in the relevant successions. Now, it's easy now to take the wisdom criteria now recommended for global stratotypes and not necessarily applicable to regional stratotypes. Next slide. Uh, I won't dwell on it. Uh, the paper, um, uh, the Nelson Lucas paper started here. The only thing to point out is the Stephanian is defined whether we like it or not on flora. Next slide. And we'll move on from that to the, the next slide, please. Uh, with, within that uh, table, the floras were used conceptually later by Bob Wagner to identify uh, uh, floral zones. But let's be quite clear, the Stephanians conceived as only referring to the succession in continental continental fasces in Western Europe. Both the Westphalian and Stephanian are defined by the content of macroflora, recognized as assemblages, not biozones. There are no other fossil groups of diagnostic significance in the Westphalian D and Stephanian in their continental con uh, context. And the concepts expressed here are essentially biostratigraphical, the nose type sections. Uh, the fact that these uh, zones are incomplete, if we could move on please, next slide, is a reflection that the original idea of the saint Etienne succession uh, had the fallacy that this was uh, uh, disturbed by a number of tectonic and erosional events. The, the saint Etienne columns on the left hand side uh, at no time has there been a stratotype in the saint Etienne succession to support recognition of Stephanian A as a chronostratigraphic unit. And similarly, is there no stratotype to define Stephanian B? The so-called diagnostic floras of the Stephanian are short snapshots of flora in structurally isolated units in an isolated intramontane area and do not reflect continuous evolution of a floor of regional extent. Next slide. 
Now, since uh, 1958, the Halem Congress accepted the only part of North Central Europe where Stephanian strata succeed Westphalian B, West, Westphalian, is in the Saar Lorraine coalfield. Now, uh, you've heard a discussion. Uh, some people are saying there's no gap. Well, I'm displaying here the section prepared by Gottfried Neuper. I'm sure Hermann uh, knew uh, Gottfried Neuper. I knew Neuper, uh, excellent geologist. Uh, structurally, there is a significant break. Now, whether the time is uh, as much as has been claimed, that may be open to discussion. Certainly the German workers at that time were prepared to go along with a recognition of a significant gap. Uh, now, I'm pretty certain that Cleel, I haven't spoke to him in the last 12 months, but I'm pretty certain that he has not gone back on his recognition of a three million year gap, uh, as understood, uh, between the Holtz conglomerate and the youngest strata of the, um, uh, of, of the underlying Westphalian. Now, the other point uh, was that this was rejected as a potential area for a strata type, not only because of the tectonic gap, it was exposure and also the fact that this is an intramontane succession. It, another, similar to the uh, Sire Lorraine, it offers very little uh, correlation potential. And the suggestion was made that, that uh, this should be sought elsewhere. Next slide, please. Next slide. Uh, you make a uh, comment on uh, Borisma's comment. Well, look, uh, in effect, the alternatives that we're looking at is let's put a line through the middle and make any of these uh, units, uh, let's stretch them out a bit and that will solve the problem. Well, okay, if that's uh, the biostratigraphical position, but as a chronostratigraphic uh, result, that cannot be. We're changing the uh, intent and definition of the units on either side. Now, um, during the 60s and 70s, the successions in North of Spain were identified by numerous workers as the location where a more or less continuous sedimentary succession covers the interval mid-Westphalian to upper Stephanian, otherwise not represented in Europe. Now, for example, this was the conclusion of the 1977 subcommission, Working Group on Westphalian D, led by Jean-Pierre Laven. Next section, please. Now, uh, Wagner proposed the Cantabrian substage. This was a proposal. It never, it was never other than a proposal. Uh, it uh, was published uh, in conjunction with the formal proposal paper uh, in continuous pagination in the uh, in, in the Congress volume. Uh, the the difference, uh, the apparent boundary was fixed on difference in flora. Um, the proposal was that the base should be taken at the base of the finding upward cycle conglomerate, which culminated at the first occurrence of a flora of clear Stephanian aspect. John, I'm sorry, you haven't read your paper. You've got that wrong. Uh, you, if you're going to criticize Wagner, Please read the references and get it right. It was not the unconformity. It's very clear in English if you want to read it. Uh, we might here also note the proposal uh, was never submitted to the subcommission uh, for voting. And uh, please note the position of the Barranquito Marine Formation. Next slide, please. Now, this is where we are at the moment. I'm, so, I'm sorry it's uh, rather, rather small. Uh, but uh, it's entirely timescale based. The sections covering the Westphalian Stephanian interface, the center of the chart, are all in the North Palencia Basin. Now, this is a paralic basin of mixed marine and terrigenous deposits located on the northeastern margin of the Paleotathis Ocean. We can note that with respect to contem contemporary uh, deposits, 
uh, recognizes what is now mid of Western North America. These are separated by a major mountain chain. Uh, okay, uh, agreed that as mapping went on, uh, it was clear that the Tejerina uh, section was, was not ideal, uh, largely because it was found that there were much longer sections uh, above and below this. Now, uh, the proposal was developed uh, to redefine the base in the Via, Mina, Via Nueva Marine Formation. There, this is the only change of definition of the base of the Cantabrian that has taken place. Now, uh, next slide, please. Next slide. Uh, yeah, we, no, go back, please. We're running out of time. Uh, we now have absolute dates on Tonstein's closely related to the type sections, the base of the, or top of the Cantabria marked by the base of the Bardwellian, 305 million years, another section on the say, Severo type, another Tonstein, the Severo type section, uh, 303.6 million years, makes the top of the Bardwellian about 300 million years. Uh, we can, uh, and, and these are pretty secure, uh, chemical abrasion dates. Now, uh, next section, next slide, please. I'll slip over this one. It is a long section, whether you like it or not, but okay, next section again. Next uh, slide again, yeah. To suggest that the these successions are not well characterized is a misrepresentation. There has been detailed studies of uh, of, of fusilinids. Van Krinkel has certainly uh, found protrotocytes in the Brachiosera formation. Uh, the bivalves, brachiopods, uh, palynomorphs have all been studied in detail. Uh, so, you know, it, it's there if one looks for it. Next uh, section, please. Next slide, please. Uh, I won't comment again. Uh, it's a long section. Uh, do note the Rio Rubagon is actually the uh, type section of the Brenocera formation, which is a major part of the Cantabrian uh, construct. And uh, this has been reported in detail on its faunas. Next uh, slide, please. Now, there have been plenty of visits and uh, uh, people who've been part of this uh, meeting have looked at conodonts in the uh, Branyasera formation. I don't have time to stop and discuss it further, but uh, we maybe get some comment from them later. Next slide, please. Next slide, that's it. Uh, this summarizes the steps of the proposal di discussion. The point is, uh, this meets the requirements of, a, uh, of the subcommission at that time. Now, next time, next slide, please. Uh, it's uh, ludicrous, facile even, to suggest a legalistic argument that approval in 1989 by the subcommission was somehow illegitimate. Incidentally, um, uh, the, uh, the old chairman uh, but had died by this stage, so uh, we can see exactly who voted for what. It's a perfectly open uh, voting pattern. The subcommission voted for that change and uh, the Cantabrian sub substages comply le legally with all the requirements of the subcommission. Next uh, slide, please. Now then, uh, yeah, we've had these uh, questions about the chronostratigraphic class classification, but we should remember Hedberg was quite clear, biostratigraphic zones are not isochronous and zone boundaries cannot become chronostratigraphic boundaries. Now, this is not contrary to the principle expressed in later papers by Romani that, to quote, fossils alone provide distinct time marks. But biostratigraphy can establish the criteria for recognizing a chronostratigraphic boundary, but this once established and remain as the point of reference. The Cantabrian Barwellian substages comply entirely with the requirements for definition of regional chronostratigraphic units. 
And do bear in mind that it's not without precedent that the base of uh, stages and substages have been changed. I think the Missourian's been changed uh, two or three times uh, within the last six or seven decades. Next slide, please. Next. Now, uh, yeah, the Odontopterus cantabrica zone is an assemblage zone as recognized by the International Stratigraphic Guide. There's no reason why that should not be the base uh, to be uh, uh, used as a reference uh, to characterize a chronostratigraphic zone, but it does not define it. Next slide, please. Now, uh, Cleal and colleagues undertook a detailed definition of the base of the Cantabrica zone with re re reference to the Cantabrian stratotype. They made clear they were defining the biozone and not the chronostratigraphic unit. It is a validation of the conceptual definition of the Cantabrian stage that the base of the Cantabrica zone is tightly tied to the base of the chronostratigraphic zone. Next point, next slide. Now, uh, yeah, the Odontopterus cantabrica material was fragmentary, but this is a widely recognized species, frequently considered diagnostic of the lowermost Cantabrian. Uh, we can discuss with any of the workers whether they do. Next slide. But cuticular studies, uh, it, it, it's fine quoting Zodro, but I mean, Zodro recently has uh, uh, been able to robustly characterize the front structure of, the, of this species and cuticular studies confirm the co-identity of the species uh, through the various areas in which it's been recognized. Uh, the co-identity with uh, Schlochheimai is, iris is of no relevance for the fact of using this species as a uh, guide to the biozone, but it has no bearing on the recognition of the Cantabrian substage. So I'll go on to the final point, please. Next slide. Now, the Cantabrian and sub Barwellian substages are defined by the most exhaustively documented stratotypes of the West European framework. Uh, the subcommission recognized these units following exhaustive formal discussion amongst European workers and others in the period 1965-89. The stratotypes are accessible, natural surface exposures. They're the most continuously exposed of any of the European stratotypes. The two substages are based on a succession of mixed marine and terrigenous sediments. Uh, fossil content allows correlation to the global stratotype of the Russian platform and with the entirely continental successions of North and Central Europe. Uh, the Cantabrian and Barwellian substage is the only defined elements of which a chronostratigraphic framework for the late Paleozoic, late Pennsylvania Western Europe can generally presently be constructed. So uh, the critique of these substages offers uh, nothing new, suggests no practical alternatives. Uh, in fact, it's a step backwards. It is, uh, misses the point if it thinks that a marine section in Europe is somehow going to be a measure of uh, correlating with the entirely continental uh, deposits of North and Central Europe. That would be of no use whatsoever. So uh, I make the case that we should maintain and for keep these uh, substages formally recognized. And uh, by all means, we should look for further work to characterize and fix them. But uh, within the European context, strictly within the European context, these occupy, uh, these present rocks that occupy a period of time that is not otherwise represented uh, with any clarity in the rest of the European uh, continent. I'll close there. Thank you. 
All right, thank you. Now, now we're going to give uh, John Nelson five minutes to rebut what what uh, what was just said. So, John Nelson, please. Uh, thank you, John. Uh, I only have a a few remarks. Uh, uh, from what you have said, it's it's evident that uh, there is further work that should be done in the in the Stefanian and West. Westphalian type areas as well, their stratotypes being incomplete and not well characterized, uh, possibly a uh, hundred plus years of, of coal test boring, hoping hopefully a few of those have been preserved and, uh, and could be used to better characterize both of those units and, and tie them into the Cantabrian. Uh, I haven't found the uh, exact quote on that uh, uh, lower boundary from 1969. I did find that it is at an unconformity, but I'll have to carefully examine the chart again to uh, uh, see exactly which unconformity that is. Uh, I did not allude to the 1989 subcommission report. Uh, uh, I did not mention it at all, and I, I certainly don't question its validity as a as a, as a formal procedure. Uh, uh, boundaries of, uh, uh, certainly the boundaries of, of units, whether litho or chronostratigraphic may be changed. Uh, uh, the stratotype is, uh, is never changed. It remains as the original definition, but uh, reference sections may be proposed and certainly units are, are redefined legally. And, and this is commonly done. And the Des Moines and Missourian is a good example. It was, uh, as Phil Heckel told us yesterday, it's been uh, uh, reestablished in a, a new and, and better exposed section that uh, contains a more complete fossil record. Uh, I don't have any further comments at this time. Thank you. Okay, um, so John, you have five minutes to uh, finish this up, please. Well, uh... I understand that the, I think the two sort of fundamental problems here. Uh, I do recognize that Bob Wagner, I think, uh, used his floral zones uh, to interpret the North American succession and used them uh, inadequately, it, it, to put it kindly, uh, uh, I don't believe that uh, the floral zones have the precision uh, or indeed the long-term, long-distance correlation potential to uh, be used for the type of interpretation that Bob made at that time. But I do stress that that is, in my view, nothing to do with the legitimacy of a function of a chronostratigraphic unit defined on a stratotype in its regional area. Now, uh, it, it, it's very much related to the region of West Europe, Western Europe. Western Europe does present a whole set of problems. John was quite correct that uh, this as a period, the, the Casimovian generally, and uh, through the Cantabrian of uh, a, a very strong tectonic uh, events in the West European area, uh, it, which is why it would be totally unsuitable uh, as any global uh, stratotype. But nevertheless, it's a region in which uh, there are certain characteristics shared across the region. And the fossils that you can use and the sections you can use are constrained by what you have in that region. Uh, it would have been great to have had a succession with loads of you know, fusilinids, conodonts interbedded with uh, macro fossils and uh, ma macroflora and other elements. Unfortunately, that is not the West European uh, 
uh, context. Uh, and uh, coming back to the what is now, uh, everybody's quite keen to quote uh, the recent work by Bessley and Chris Cleal, uh, do remember that they're looking at that area which was previously the Peralic area north of the Bariscan origin and subsequently uh, suffered extensive aridification. Uh, I, I say that because I don't think we have any control to say whether it's dry, uh, looking at dry floras or uh, any cycles in it, but we're certainly extensive red beds. And I don't think there's any suggestion uh, by uh, Besley or, or, or Cleal that there is a succession that can be used to define the time between the Westphalian D as we used to understand it, or Asturian, uh, through to the base of the Stephanian. And I would add another aspect to it, that the early discussions on the Westphalian D and indeed the Stratin Saar were maintained at the time when there was a very active coal mining industry and access to underground workings, numerous boreholes. At the current time, there are, excru there are very few um, successions, uh, outcrops available. The succession, the su suggestions of looking for a base of Westphalian D in, in, in the Lorraine area of, of, of the Saar Basin were soon dropped when the coal mining industry closed. There's nothing to see. There were some drill holes. Um, and uh, similarly, uh, the Saar, I mean, uh, Herman may wish to correct me, but uh, there are some uh, quarries, but generally the Saar succession is not well exposed. It was a general consensus that for this interval, Northwest Spain was the place where a more or less continuous sedimentary succession would be located. And I believe that is an argument that still holds to define chronostratigraphic units within a regional context. Now, I, I, no doubt my time's about to go, but I would also say that in the context of the, of, of the uh, workshop of the last few days, uh, there are a lot of time uh, talking about uh, global stratotype uh, for the Casamovian, which has still not been fixed. Now, uh, the criteria for a global stratotype are pretty demanding, but it's all about correlation potential. Now, uh, although the subcommission is very much focused on that, uh, I know there may be an argument which says, oh, the subcommission's far too busy to get involved with regional um, chronostratigraphic schemes. I would turn the argument round and say, would we, all of us who work over this succession, be better if all the regional frameworks and schemes were asked to submit their structures to discussion within the subcommission context so that stratotypes can be identified and would help all of us take a bigger, wider, global view of what was happening in this interval. I'll stop there because I can see Spencer's getting nervous. Um, <laughs> yeah, Godzilla disappeared. I don't know where he went. I think he's walking to Illinois and then he'll be <laughs> on to the UK. But um, well, thank, now listen, thank both of you for, for, these, uh, for this tete-a-tete, uh, -tete, this back and forth. So the, now we have the um, final discussion session. So let's begin. Any commentary questions for John Nelson, John Knight?